All right, well, guys, it is Monday, which means it's time to start strong with yours truly. We're going to get your week off to a strong start. Patricia Garza Dobbs is with us. Elizabeth and Sharon Packett are with us. Elizabeth Wolf is with us. Guys, thanks so much. You know, I'm sorry I wasn't with you last week. I was going through a difficult family situation, but that's actually my topic for this week is talking about when we go through those difficult situations, you know, so much can come up in our hearts during those heartbreaking times. You know, I was dealing with a family medical emergency, a very serious uh, and heartbreaking situation with my mother. I flew out to be with her in the hospital. And, um, you know, when we're going through those times and our heart is breaking, uh, we wonder what is happening why god are you allowing these situations i'm not going to pretend to fully understand but one thing i do know for sure is there's a purpose to the battles and there's a blessing in the battles and especially in those situations that are absolutely heartbreaking you know my mother had had a back surgery and it was quite serious and an infection got in a very very serious infection and she almost died from it and they had to do an emergency surgery to go back in and clean things up and i don't understand all of it But um, she was what I got there um, and she came out of surgery. I was with her in her hospital room and she was writhing in pain and screaming in agony. And I was crying out to God and praying in tongues and speaking in power. And in the moment, it didn't look like anything was happening other than my heart was absolutely breaking because of what my mom was going through. And later on, I had some time to process this all with God. And and I know whatever it is, you know, we all go through different heartbreaking situations. But I, I want to emphasize this. There is a purpose to the battles and there is a blessing in the battles. And even those heartbreaking situations like that, one of the blessings is in those heartbreaking situations, it opens a door in our heart for greater compassion to come through. Sometimes when we have no idea what's going on, we have no idea why it's going on. All we have is our trust in God and compassion in our heart. And it feels, that can feel powerless. But what I want to tell you is that's actually an incredibly powerful thing. When we connect to that place of of compassion, even if it's in, I don't know what's going on, but I care for this person and my heart is breaking for this person. Compassion is powerful. Think about this. God's heart broke over the fall. God's heart was broken over the separation from his people. But he, he, he that, that heartbreak led to compassion. He was compassionate for us. There was a plan in place. His John 3.16, love and compassion, he sent his son into the earth so that all could be saved. Think about in Luke 7 with uh, Jesus, um, when he comes into Nain and he sees this funeral procession. Actually, this is so powerful. Let me read this to you. This is out of Luke 7, 11 through 17. It says, Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son. So this was a heartbreaking situation. Jesus comes to town and there's a funeral procession. That's sad. And then he sees that the funeral procession is for a young man that was the only son of this woman who's already lost her husband. This is a heartbreaking situation. The young man who had died was a widow's only son and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, when the Lord saw this situation, it says in the New Living Translation that his heart overflowed with compassion. Did you catch that? It doesn't just say he felt compassion. It says his heart overflowed with compassion. In these heartbreaking situations, our heart, if we, if we don't close our heart off, if we don't get bitter in the frustration, if we don't give in to fear in the awful circumstances, our hearts can overflow with compassion, specifically because we don't know what's going on, because we don't like what's going on, because we don't understand. If we'll connect in with God's heart and simply choose to stay in the moment and even allow our heart to break, our heart can overflow with compassion. Here's what happened. Jesus said to the widow of Nain, don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearers stopped. Young man, Jesus said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up, 
and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. So Jesus didn't turn from the heartbreaking situation. Jesus didn't turn from the funeral procession, from the heartbreak of the widow, the heartbreak of the widow losing her only son. He moved into this situation. He allowed his heart to feel it all, and his heart overflowed with compassion, and that brought in resurrection power. For those of you who have read my most recent book, Winning the Battle for Your Mind, Will, and Emotions, you know the story in there that I tell when God helped me connect to his heart and I saw the raising of the dead. There's so much power in compassion and we tend to think of that as, you know, we're in a situation, we feel compassion for the person and that's good. You know, we can go and feel compassion in a situation. But in those moments, like what I experienced so many times last week at my mother's hospital at the bedside, and I know there's things you guys are going through, compassion flooded into me because I wasn't sure what else to do. I knew I, I wanted to turn away from it. I wanted to run away from it because it's so hard to see a loved one suffering. But in that, I would simply move in to the compassion of God, let my heart break and pray from that place. So I wanna talk a little bit about heartbreak, compassion, and the power of God and how we tap into that. Number one, we allow ourselves to feel that compassion for the person going through the heartbreaking situation. Like for me, for my mom, it was very easy to get into compassion because my heart was breaking and I was praying in tongues and I didn't care who heard me in the hospital room or the hospital. I was praying in tongues. I was making decrees. I was crying out to the Lord with great, not only compassion, but passion. And even when it looked like nothing was happening, I was crying out, Lord, I know you're with us. Lord, I know you have the ability to hammock my mother in your comfort, in your love, in your peace right now. And I send all this pain to the cross. I send all this infection to the cross. I send all, everything she's going through right now to the cross, and I declare you are her comforter. Now, in the moment, nothing seemed to shift, but I tell you what, within an hour, things had calmed down a little bit. She was still in pain. She was still dealing with all of it, but all of a sudden it went from screaming and writhing in pain and agony to where, yes, the, the, the nurses had come in and the doctors were there and um, they had her on pain meds and all that. So you could point to those things, but I point to them and say, thank you, Lord, for those. And then everything calmed down and she was able to rest. She was able to get some sleep. I was able to pray over in that situation. So it gave me great compassion for her. And from that place, when you realize there's nothing you can do but pray, one of the things we can do in that situation is feel like it's not working, nothing's happening, and shut down, stop praying, even get frustrated with God. God, why are you allowing this to happen? God, why aren't you doing anything? One thing I've learned over the years is there are many times I don't know what God is doing, but if I focus more on what he's like, knowing that he loves my mom, knowing that he paid the price for her to be pain-free and free of those horrible infections that got in during the surgery that were ravaging her body and free from even, even the situation that had started it all with the back and the need for surgery, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know exactly what to do, but I knew to pray and I knew to connect with my heart for God, God's heart for her, and from that place of compassion, pray and power. So number one, with heartbreak, we don't turn away from it, we lean into it. The other, excuse me, the other thing we have to be wary of is to not be overwhelmed by the heartbreak to where we do wanna shut down, we do wanna turn away. So we lean into it, not so not leaning into it in the sense of becoming um, um, a maudlin or anything like that, but allowing ourselves, even in that moment, to admit, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't like what's going on, but I'm, but I'm leaning into you. I'm leaning into your truth, and I'm praying from compassion because I have nothing else right now, but I am choosing to believe you and your truth are more than enough, and I will pray with all the more fierceness, all the more passion, all the more fire, all the more power. So number one. One, um, that compassion for when people are going through hard times, but not only for the person we care about that our heart's breaking for. The other thing I found that happened with me is I started praying um, throughout the whole week, praying not only for my mother, but praying for others who were going through similar situations. I would lift up um, uh, people who were going through similar pain and dealing with similar sickness, and I was rebuking the pain and the infection not only in my mother's body, but I was rebuking pain and infection in anyone, anywhere, ever, because my heart was breaking for them as well, because I realized people I didn't know, people I hadn't met, they're going 
going through something similar. So I started dealing with pain and infection, not only in the local level, as it were, of my mother, but on the global level of rebuking every spirit of pain, every spirit of infection, so it could touch no one in the earth because Jesus had paid for it all to be lifted off each and every person. So we, we can, in that heartbreak, we can feel compassion for the person going through the heartbreaking circumstances that we love, that we're connected with. But then we can also connect with God's heart for anyone going through that and be praying for them. The other thing that I was hit by is because at times I was feeling overwhelmed and I was feeling powerless. I had to choose to believe I wasn't, to know that in Christ I had power, I had authority, that through the finished work of the cross, I could stand in the goodness of God and declare that healing power and his his, his peace, his comfort for my mother and for anyone going through it. But I also found myself feeling compassion for families that were going through something similar. Their hearts were breaking and they were feeling overwhelmed. They were feeling powerless. So I was praying comfort for them. And for those who knew Christ, that they would know that he was with them no matter what they were or weren't seeing, and that they would feel his comfort and they would, and their faith would actually be stirred, not lessened. Like when Jesus said to Peter, Satan will try to sift you like wheat, but fear not, I have prayed so that your faith will not fail. I started praying for people and families going through similar situations all over the globe that their faith would not fail, but it would actually be stirred, that it would actually be increased, and they would be able to see the promises of God and declare them and pray from that place of, of heartbreak, but compassion and see the power of God move through that. Um, so we can pray for the person we love and care about who's going through the heartbreaking situation. We can pray for others we don't know or have never met who are going through similar situations. But we can also pray for those who might be, who are the, the, those people's support group and, and loved ones and family who might feel overwhelmed. The other place compassion came up in me is I felt so blessed. So many of you were praying for my mother and praying for me and my sister as we were there with her. And I was so blessed that I felt so supported in our ministry praying for us and our intercessors, but so many of you reaching out, asking how my mom was doing, praying for us. I felt so blessed, so supported, and my heart broke for everyone going through those situations that, that, that didn't have that love, didn't have that support that they saw tangibly, that they could feel in the spirit. So I started praying for them for I had compassion for anyone who felt alone in these circumstances. Again, that all came from leaning into this heartbreak and fully experiencing it and asking God to meet me in it. And, and God, what can I learn from you in this situation? So we can pray for those we care about. We can pray for those who are going through similar things. We can also pray for those who are supporting people, but feeling so overwhelmed and so powerless and don't feel like they have support. I prayed for um, um, emotional support for people and families that were in similar situations, that, that people would rally around them. And that I prayed for financial support because we were fortunate enough that between my sister and my mother and I, we had some resources and it's, it's, it's a lot, but we, we're, we're believing we'll be able to cover it all. But there are others out there that don't even have our resources. So I was praying for um, emotional support. I was praying for financial support for others. I was praying for um, even intercession because there are many out there who don't feel that they have anyone they can reach out to and say, please pray. So I was asking God to raise up intercessors on behalf of all those who didn't know that they had intercessors, who didn't feel that they had intercessors, and for angels to be released to those people. And I was even praying for those who do not know Christ, that through this situation, he would reveal himself so they know there is someone absolutely, tangibly, and irrevocably on their side in these challenging and difficult situations. So that's the way in heartbreaking situations that others are going through or that we're in and our heart breaks for others, that we can see ourselves plug into compassion. And from that compassion, like we see with God in John 3, 16, like we see with Jesus in Luke 7, that it can bring us into the place of the power of God where even resurrection power flows. But there's one other 
thing that God put on my heart when it comes to heartbreak, opening our door for compassion, opening the door of our heart into compassion so the power of God could flow. It's when people do things to us that are heartbreaking. And this may sound odd, but I really got to thinking about this. And thankfully, I didn't experience it this last week. But as I've been praying into this, you know, the, 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 the purpose of the battle and the blessing in the battle and feeling overwhelmed, feeling powerless at times, feeling confused, feeling afraid, and not giving place to that in heartbreak, but giving place to compassion, the power of God. One of the things I thought about that also breaks our heart is when people do things to us that are unfair, unkind, that are heartbreaking. I'm realizing that this is part of what Jesus modeled to us. No one was treated more unfairly, more, no one was treated more unkindly than Jesus, and yet he never let his heart harden towards anybody. He felt compassion for them. And I got to thinking about this, and this is actually what he does on the cross when he says, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And I think I shared with you guys a story from a couple months ago when I was going through something and the Lord said, and some unfair things had been done to me, and the Lord said, forgive them, they know not what they do. And my first response as I was sitting in my prayer chair talking with God about this is, Lord, I think they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, it seemed like they really were aware of what they were doing and why they were doing it. And he said, even if they knew what they were doing, they didn't know what they were doing. Um, so forgive them for they know not what they, were, what they did. And I thought, gosh, Lord, you're so amazing because everyone who came against you, many were very, very intentional about it. And yet on the cross, you were saying, Father, forgive them for even if they were intentional, they didn't really know what they were doing. They didn't know who they were partnering with. They didn't know what was going on. So forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And, you know, this really is not only what Jesus modeled to us on the cross, but he showed us the power of this. Whenever he rebuked a demon and cast it out of someone, whether it was deliver them from a demon or deliver them from a spirit of, of sickness, that word rebuke in the Greek that so often the word used when Jesus rebuked um, a spirit or infirmity or a demon, the word in the Greek is, a, is epi, epitamao. I'm, I'm never very good at the Greek pronunciation, but it's epitamao. And what's interesting is it's one Greek word, but it comes from two root words. And epi means, um, the, uh, epi means to come against or to be against. But then tamao means to prize, revere, honor, and value. And years and years ago, God highlighted something to me about a strategy of being effective in deliverance ministry and rebuking demons out of people. And it was this, it was the, it was the, the two sides of the epitamao coin, which is to come against or to stand strongly against, um, but also to value greatly. And years ago, I asked him, Lord, how can one word mean two different things? And he said, it's because you prize, revere, honor, and value the person but you come against the spirit that has come against them or trying to work through them. And in heartbreaking situations, when people are doing things to us that aren't fair, that aren't kind, that are heartbreaking, we can come into that place of compassion for the person because they're actually a victim too. It doesn't look and feel like it. It looks like they're victimizing us. But remember, the enemy roams about like a lion looking for a victim he can devour. We never want to get into a victim mentality, even if somebody's coming against us. Because when we take on a victim mentality, we're stepping out of our place of victory in Christ and the enemy can devour us. So even when someone does something heartbreaking to us, we can come into the place of compassion not only for ourselves or what we're going through, but compassion for them because they're victims in it too. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't know who they've partnered with. So we don't take it on. We come strongly against what is being released. We bind the curses, all of that. We stand against it, but we continue to value and love that person, not what they're doing, not what they're saying, but them in the eyes of God. That gives us compassion in the situation, even for them, and in that, it opens our heart up for the power of God to flow through us. And we can things, see things shift powerfully. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys this week. I wanted to give you a little update on what we've been going through as a family because so many of you have been asking and so many of you have been so kind to stand with us and to be praying for my mom. But I know many of you are going through very difficult things too, whether it's health situations or financial situations or prodigal situations or relationship situations or even faith situations where it, looks, it doesn't look and feel like in the moment God's showing up. 
But if you allow your heart to break open as opposed to be broken and shut down, to be break open and come into that place of compassion, you can see the power of God flow through you, even to the point of resurrection power. So God bless you all. Thank you for joining me again this Monday and getting your week off to a strong start with this uh, devotion and, and revelation. God bless you guys. I'll see you next Sunday for another Start Strong.